Zirupan, you were talking about uh, the fact that in Thailand it is very easy to dissolve parties. Can you maybe elaborate a bit on the legal framework of party dissolution? Why can a party be dissolved and who can decide upon that? Well, the first time that um, the party was dissolved was in 2006, after the coup d'etat. Um, the constituents said that... Um, the organization that has this power to dissolve the parties is the constitutional court upon the request from the election commission. And there are several reasons that parties can be dissolved. For example, they did not follow the rules required by the party act. For example, they need to have uh, 5,000 members from the beginning and 50,000 members across the country in the course of four years with four branches. If they fail to do that, the election commission can ask the constitutional court to dissolve the party. So like that, this is more like uh, technical problems from the parties. And uh, the other way is if the parties found guilty of something, for example, after the 2000. 19 general elections, uh, the Future Forward, which is uh, the second largest opposition in Thailand back then, was dissolved because um, it said that the constitu constitutional court said that uh, the party violated uh, the party's law. The party loaned the money from its own party leader. And uh, according to the law, like I said before, um, the donation to the party cannot exceed 10 million baht, 10 million Thai baht, but that loan is exceeding 10 million baht. So that's used as the reason uh, to dissolve the party. Uh, this is against uh, many public's opinion, but it's done. So you see that um, any tiny reasons can be used as an excuse to s dissolve the party. Vote buying is another reason. If um, executive members of the parties is found guilty of vote buying, the whole party will be dissolved. And this has been done to um, uh, tyrannize uh, sister party Palang Pasharat. I'm sorry, tyrannize sister party Palang Pasharshun, the People's Action Party, uh, back in uh, 2007. So um, in the course of about 10 years, there have been more than 20 parties dissolved by uh, the Constitutional Court upon the request of the Election Commission. And uh, talking about the Constitutional Court, I also want to talk to you about the judiciary and the trust in the constitutional state. How would you say is the state of the rule of law in, in Thailand? How impartial are the courts? not especially the constitutional court, mm -hmm. but the courts in general. What is the power of the judiciary? Well, the power of the, judici the, power of the judiciary in Thailand is very high. Um, maybe because it's conducted uh, in the name of the king. Uh, as for the constitutional court itself, um, the nine judges were appointed mainly from the junta government from the NCPO. So uh, there were a lot of criticisms against uh, the constitutional court verdict many times. Uh, but the power of the constitutional court is, is very, very high and it's, it seemed to be expanded for the past many years uh, up to the point that some people called it um, uh, the judi judicialization. Uh, they use the power to like dissolve the party, uh, to strike down some of uh, the legislative um, law, for example, um, abortion rights or same-sex marriage. And uh, recently they just had a verdict on the term limit of the prime minister. So um, I believe that uh, the constitutional court has, uh, has played a very big role in every turning point of Thai politics. And how would you say that, how consistent are their decisions 
do you have I, I to my understanding is also there's also been courts that do not publish any reasoning to their decisions um how is this in thailand do you do you have a sort of legal reasoning and the decisions that the courts render and are they consistent with the, the previous um the previous uh, judicial practice of thai of thailand well they have to publish the reasons but um that there's no requirement uh, from the reason for individual judges. They come out as uh, like overall uh, reasonings. Um, as for the consistency, I would say, well, not 100% consistency. Uh, the verdict seemed to be more kind of pro-conservative ideology. And um, sometimes it's, uh, I mean, the criticisms against the constitutional court verdict is uh, is prohibited, and um, when there's the what do you mean by prohibited? Would it be illegal to publish uh, an academic article criticizing the decision of the constitutional court? Well, there are some incidents that people were charged from criticizing the court. Even some academic uh, was charged for criticizing the verdict like that. So. It's not, I mean, written in the law, but the constitutional court would say that uh, this is contempt of the court. So this is kind of uh, a threatening recommendation from the court itself. Understood. And the same thing also about uh, a Tanzania. Consolata, how would you say how independent is the judiciary in Tanzania? Um, because of the, 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 the upper hand, uh, the executive branch, especially the president, um, have in the, in, the, in the judiciary, then uh, we, we can conclude that the independence of the judiciary is not, is not guaranteed. Um, so um, that, that, that's what I would, uh, I would say. And uh, also talking about the legal reasoning of the courts, do the... Does the court have to publish any reasoning when they yeah. render? Yeah, yeah, I think it, yeah, they, they, they do publish. And are they consistent with their previous jurisprudence? No, um, sometimes they are not. And I would give an example of one uh, very popular case on independent candidates in Tanzania, which is uh, constitutionally um, not allowed. So if um, you want to compete for electoral positions in Tanzania, one must be um, a member of political party. But at, this, at the same time, the constitution gives um, freedom uh, to individuals to associate. So uh, this particular uh, provision on uh, people being members of parties to compete for electoral positions was questioned um, in the court of law. And um, in the first instance, the court decided uh, in favor of independent candidacy and recommended the government to actually allow independent countries. That was in 2006. But then the government um, appealed to the, the, to the Court of Appeal, and the Court of Appeal um, actually uh, ruled in favor of government, and they said uh, this is a political thing, <laughs> and, then, and therefore it has to be uh, solved politically. So you can see the inconsistency um, and that I would say is because of the um, um, of the upper hand that the executive has over other um, organs of government. Thank you. And to, to wrap up our conversation today, I'd also like to give our listeners an outlook uh, on the um, legal system and on the political system of Thailand and Tanzania. And I'd like to ask you, what do you think like the biggest challenge in the democratization process is? And uh, Sirupan, if you'd like to start. Well, I think the biggest challenge is, uh, there are three biggest challenges. Uh, first of all, um, the possibility of coup d'etats in Thailand mm -hmm. can happen. I think this is like a, a basic ABC thing. Um, the second one is um, um, the establishment in Thailand, the conservative clique uh, seem to unaware of the changing landscape of, uh, of the waters itself. Um, the younger generation seems to 
um, ask for demand that they think uh, they should have. But the establishment seemed to uh, unaware of this change. And um, uh, the conflict between, um, I'm not saying only the younger and older generation, but the pro-progressive camp or pro-democratic camp, as they call themselves, and a, a, a nationalist or royalist camp is uh, in going to be more intensified maybe after the next election. Uh, the third one uh, regarding the political parties itself. The parties in Thailand um, have been created to serve as an instrument for particular uh, ambitious leaders, be it uh, politicians or retired military, both alike. They tend to be personalized. So, uh, you name it, Thai parties today, if, um, I mean, it seems that each party has its own owners, its own leader, either behind the scene or playing uh, up front. So if these party leaders are gone, the party might not exist anymore. So the biggest problem in Thailand is that we don't have um, an institution that keep the linkage between um, electoral politics and the voters, uh, factionalized parties, um, switching parties are, are common. So these are three biggest challenges for Thailand, democratization. And Consulata, what do you say what is the biggest challenge for Tanzania? Um, just pick two main ones. One is on the legal and institutional framework, which is to highly skewed towards the ruling party and does not uh, provide for equal opportunities for all the players, and, and in this case, um, for uh, especially for the opposition parties. And therefore, the legal system um, is, is so much uh, restrictive um, that political uh, opposition does not have a chance um, uh, to actually threaten the dominance of, the, of, of political parties. And therefore, I think we need um, um, a lot uh, to do in terms of legal reforms. But the second one, I think, is in, on the part of the Tanzanians themselves. I think um, Tanzanians have been characterized um, as um, subject. <laughs> Um, so we need, um, because even when uh, we want to, to, to make changes, if we don't have a critical mass to influence and pressure for changes and reform, I think we will still uh, be having uh, problems in terms of uh, the future of, of democracy in the country.